1 million gems and emotes. Heck yeah. First thing I thought to myself is I am going to research the poop out of this. I'm going to find out the best strategy. First things first, you have to know the format. Do we even know the format yet? Without this knowledge, you will lose the CRL Fantasy League to me. So I'll have more gems. Wait, why am I sharing my strategy again? For the people. Mmm, it's an orange juice. Okay, guys, so before submitting your draft picks blindly, there's going to be some things you guys need to know, like the CRL format. We don't quite know it yet. But we do know that there are six teams battling out for a total prize pool of 1 million US dollars. Woo! It's like 1.3 million Canadian. I love it. How much bacon could I buy? Anyways, following this year's CRL model for the playoffs, the format could very well be the same. There are rumors that it's going to be very similar. Team to reach three points first eliminates the opposing team. In all rounds, there are going to be five parts. 2v2 and three different 1v1s. Then you go to King of the Hill for the tiebreaker. Each part is best out of three and worth one point each. Remember, first team to reach three points eliminates the opposing team completely. So if your team wins 2v2 and they win the next 1v1 and they win the other 1v1, which are each best of three, they won't need to play their last 1v1 match or the King of the Hill at all. In both rounds, it's likely going to be best of three. In the final rounds, we think that it's going to be best of five because it's the finals. Come on. First to reach three points in the final rounds will win and they will have the highest potentials for the crown. There's a huge rumor circulating that there's going to be an offline tournament determining what seed each team is. The top two teams in the secret tournament will have a bye round, which means they're automatically in the semifinals and don't have to play the first round. This is huge. They can spectate the other team and keep track of their archetypes with their play style and everything while keeping their decks unknown, completely hidden until the winner of the first round plays against them. This is just completely broken. It not only affects their crowns, this gives the two seeded teams a huge advantage. If there is a team that can upset seed one and seed two in the quarterfinals and play the finals, that is the team that's potentially going to net you the most crowns. For me, when I was in King's Cup, seed ranks were a huge stress where it could determine the final outcome of winning the entire tournament. Surgical Goblins team at King's Cup? Yeah, it's just pretty obvious. He won. But because they have a buy round, that means they could win whole round of crowns they can't get. It's us who cares about the crowns, not them. Always remember that. They could care less if, if we win some gems. They're more focused on winning any way possible. Getting one crown, getting two crowns, maybe even three crowns. But they are, after all, at the end of the day, competing for one million dollars. You bet your butt these teams are going to try and win the top two seeds. This will boost their chances enormously getting into the finals. Because of this, the top two teams are seeded into the semifinals and very likely to make it to the finals because of that huge seed advantage. Because of our limited information on the seeding at this time, I will be choosing the best teams as of today's knowledge and stats, but the best strategy is to wait to find out as much information as possible before the tournament starts. We still got like 10 days as of recording this video. Information is power. Remember, most players are under 20 years old and experience is huge. Support is huge. Analysts are huge. Home advantage is huge. Stage experience, that's incredibly important with all of the lights glaring at you, all of the cameras, 20,000 people spectating in this tournament. It's going to be very nerve wracking if you don't have any stage experience. Going through the list of players for each region, the two teams that scream out to me are Nova and Queso. I think they're going to be the top two seeds just from what I've been researching and I like Immortals as a wild card. This is without too much research in which I'll actually be going into depth later on. The seed rankings have been placed. Everything all adds up. Seed rankings, brackets, and archetypes. You can have someone that's a beast in cycle, but that only one crown. We're looking at three crown champions here with beatdowns, with clone spell, please, someone, please, for me. Queso has one of the most experienced teams in live play with Soaking and Kuchi Koo. They have so many tournaments in Europe, which is massive. Remember, experience on the big stage of all the marbles is not to be taken lightly. They're very young players, many experiencing something of this magnitude for the first time. So never overlook experience. Queso has St. Belkin, who actually trained the finalists in CRL last year. He's a great mentor, and he is greatly respected in the CRL community. Then we have Nova, who has some of the best stats and known players 
in the entire world. AU, LC, Little Chen, Nova definitely has the experience and skills to take this to a whole new level. They've also won arguably the toughest region. They have a lot of King Tower demolition under their belt and they could bring in a lot of crowns. I noticed Nova really likes playing these three players, AU, LC, and Little Chen. Remember, we're looking for strong beatdown players who have a high crown win rate in 2v2 and 1v1. Without further information for brackets and seed ranks, I cannot finalize my picks. But for now, it would be the players from both Queso and Nova. I see them having the highest chance of winning the seed tournament and going to the finals against each other. And with the final rounds very likely being best of five. Choosing two teams that play each other in the finals is key, but it is quite a gamble. Go big or go home. In Fantasy Royale, you either get the highest crowns or you don't get anything. You don't get the gems if you're, you're way off on your fantasy picks. Here are my current picks right now until more information comes out before the finals in Japan. So in News Royale, I get the free emotes and a chance to win part of 1 million gems just by entering. That sounds really fun. First, pick your lineup. Build your Fantasy Royale deck by selecting 4 CRL World Final Players and get these free emotes to your deck within a few hours after you select your lineup. Now that Knight is the biggest emote in the world. I can't believe they gave us the Knight and the Bandit. They're both so obnoxious and I love it. Number 2, follow the action and rack up the crowns. A crown will be added to your score for every crown your player earns in the CRL World Finals in Tokyo, which I'll be at. It's going to be super exciting. The crowns are kind of weird because you could pick a losing team that could have more crowns because they could three crown more, whereas the winning team could one crown and get no crowns. Like, even if they win, it doesn't matter to us. So number three is claim your gems. The participants with the most crowns at the end of the world finals split the prize of one million gems. Now, I wonder how Supercell did this. Did they give us kind of like the top 100 guesses or the ones that guess the exact crowns? They didn't really specify. That's kind of interesting. Let's go and pick Pick the draft. For me, I'm gonna pick Queso because Alvaro's my boy. So King, he's my King's Cup partner. He is my first lover. Kuchiku, he's my second lover. Then for Nova, AU and LC. You just gotta pick those two. They they are arguably one of the best in the finals right now, but anything could happen. They might win the finals, but they might not win the most crowns. That's the thing. But I want my motes, so we're gonna go for it. But I do have three more accounts to guess. I'm gonna have a more strategical outlook on everything after this. But for now, we're just going to pick these. Look at that king. There we go. Where are my motes at? Where are my motes at? Come back for more quality OJ picks when the seed ranks are finalized. Hope this was helpful and thank you for watching. Good luck in the drafts and don't be too aggressive. More information is more better.